and welcome back to Pennies and Salt. Today I am just going to show you a look inside Christian Liberty's Nature Reader Book 1 today. And also I'm going to share with you how we use it in our homeschool. that I want to say is, first of all, I think these books are beautiful and I love doing nature studies with my children. And I have absolutely loved this so far as far as enriching that nature study and really learning a little deeper. This is just book one. There are several books available, but I wanted to start from the very beginning. If you don't know, I am a homeschool mom of six children. Four of them are actual school age. My oldest is nine and he's in fourth grade. Then I have a second grader and a kindergartner and a preschooler. Um, I also have a toddler and a five month old. The toddler kind of sticks around um, with us and the thankfully the five month old still naps during most of school time. But um, we like to keep this in our morning basket. In fact, this is terrible, but I almost had forgotten that I had bought this last year for this year. Um, I bought all of my curriculum usually in the spring for the next school year. And um, so I had wanted to use this. I had been looking at it for a while and they came out with the new edition. And so I went ahead and um, added it to my cart from Rainbow Resource and, and here it is. So, we have added it to our morning basket. And what I like to do is I love to have things, especially that are enrichment for um, nature study outside of our normal core science, because this is a supplement to our science. We have been using the good and the beautiful um, unit studies um, and also a couple of other things. I will pop a card up right now, so if you want to go back and watch the video of what exactly we're doing for science, you can go back and watch that if you would like. Um, but this is just a supplement for us. Like I said, I love doing nature study, and I just thought that this would be a great way to tie that in. And um, so we do this kind of like as a science starter for the day. Um, in a notebooking style, so it also is a great way to tie in writing, and I'm going to show an example of the very first one that we did a few weeks ago, um, but I'm going to kind of show you a look inside of book one. So, I love the illustrations in here. My kids do too. They always talk about how well they're drawn and all that kind of stuff. So, there are um, nine units. And so the first one is on wasps. And I'll kind of show you a little bit more with all of this, but as you can see, you are going to learn about different types of wasps. And I will tell you, there is a lot that I have actually learned through this. I absolutely love it. Um, this has become one of my favorite things as of right now, like for this year. Um, and it might be just because it's still new or it might be because I really do like it that much. But this has become one of my new favorite little homeschool additions. But um, anyway, so unit two, other insects. So you can see you're going to learn about the ant, the life of an ant, honey ants. Um, so just different kinds of ants, honeybees, um, other types of bees, and butterflies. The next thing in book one that you will learn about is about more insects. And you can read those there. I won't read every single one of them. Remarkable insects. So, the best jumper, the mayfly, tumblebugs, the walking stick. So, all these kinds of things. Um, learning about moths, arachnids, um, prairie and forest life, um, birds, and then our creator, our great creator. Now, one of the things I want to say that I love about this, especially for this age, because like I said, my oldest is nine. So he is still in that developmental stage where when it comes to our faith and building our faith, 
he is still very much into that wonder and and learning about the mystery and and the greatness um, and the creativity of who our God is and in through his creation and so this is a time that I absolutely love to spend with my kids um, just really delving in and just being teaching them how to be in awe of our Creator and our Savior through um, everything that He has done in creating us and in creating the world around us, and how we can see little attributes of Him just everywhere. And um, so that's just a little side note. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked, but I'm just going to show you, um, for example. Unit 1 um, talks about a little mother. And so it talks about all the things that God created our mothers to do. And then it goes into teaching about the mud wasp and how he created her to be as a mother. And this was really interesting to me. I can remember um, when we read this um, a few weeks back, I was like, oh, wow, that, that is so cool. God is just straight up amazing and just how he creates things. And so, um, there again is the beautiful little illustrations. And it just has some nice little review questions. I, of course, might add on to that. Um, but this is perfect to do with my kids in all the age range that they are in. The youngest being just turned five. My preschooler just turned five. Um, and then, like I said, my oldest is nine and a half. So... Um, that's just an example. So we would read this and then go over some little questions. And again, this is our, in our morning basket time. Um, and so what I do is I like to expand on this. So I'm going to show you how we use this. So this is my, this belongs to my oldest. I don't have a wide expectation as far as this is a starter, a day starter for us. So I don't expect some like one page essay or whatever, but um, I told them that I wanted them to illustrate um, what was talked about in our study that morning. And so Tanner has has illustrated the mud wasp, what his rendition of the mud wasp. So here he has written his kind of like narration of what happened in what we read. So the mud wasp builds a nest from mud. When the eggs hatch, the mother mud wasp flies away. The mud wasp eats spiders. So that is um, my nine-year-old. Now my seven-year-old, who's in second grade, this is his drawing. Um, and so he titled it The Mud Wasp, of course, and even he put a period in there, but oh well. Anyway, the mud wasp builds a nest from mud. It buries eggs. Okay, so very simple. Um, and this is my kindergartner. His picture impressed me so much. I was just like, oh my goodness, Marcus, you did amazing. Which is, you know, it's funny because he was kind of complaining and all upset because he said he couldn't draw it. And look how, I, I just thought he did an excellent job. Um, so th this, is, this is his. Like I said, this is the first time we did this. And this is also, this to me, this is kindergarten work. So, um... I, th I think that says the wasp. <laughs> the wasp builds a nest from mud. Now, the I did write builds and from on the board. So, they knew how to write that. The other words, we go over together. Um, I have them sound out. How would we spell mud? And so, again, it turns into this little extension of a reading lesson. So, you know, this is a great way just to get your day started in hitting several subjects in one little activity that took us, gosh, no more than 20 minutes total from me reading it and them drawing and writing. So, um, this was a great little day starter for us. And then this is Sophia's, um, and she's, she made sure to draw eight little spiders. Did you know, by the way, I did not know this. I learned it from this book. But did you know that the mud wasp takes spiders and stuffs them down in the hole that the egg is laid in, walls it up with mud, so when the baby hatches out, it has food to eat because the mud wasp flies away and never even sees her babies. 
I did not know that. Um, and so they just thought that was really neat that mom provided for them, made sure that they had what they needed. So anyway, so this is hers. So Mud Wasp, the <laughs> builds a nest from mud. Um, so she, I say she's preschool and she is preschool. She's technically right on the line. Um, she has a later birthday and so she just turned five not long ago. So anyway, so I just wanted to show that to you guys on how we use it. And this is how we've continued to use it. I just um, grabbed these out of their notebooks to show you guys. But we file all these away. Each one of them has a three ring binder. And we just put this under their science section because that's exactly what it falls into. So um, it, it could also fall into writing. It, you know, so there's, there you go. Okay, so a few more things. So the next chapter that we read was about, you know, what happens when the eggs hatch. So we, you know, it didn't just leave it about teaching about the mama, it told about the children. And um, each one, you know, God the Father made them to follow his plan, okay? So um, you get all of that in there as well to see that his design is truly a perfect design. So it just enriches and invokes that wonder and that um, just being in awe of God as our creator um, and really truly being sovereign. And so, um, and then the paper wasp is the next one and learning about a social colony. And so here's something else I did for my older um, son, my nine-year-old. So they have these words in bold and we can use them as vocabulary words even. Um, and we have before. Um, and it does have the definitions in the back. So if I want him to do a little more work with that to extend for him, then it's easy to extend on. And that's what I love about science. I feel like science is something that well, science is science, and you can always go deeper and learn more. And so, this is um, just a great little addition to our science curriculum this year. So, if there is any more, that you, any questions that you have about this or comments, put them down in the comment box below. Thank you so much for your time and watching today, and I hope that you will subscribe and join us on future videos. Thanks so much. Bye.